Well, good morning, guys. Another fine day. We're building the castle today, and we're doing the inside stuff because the skies have opened up and decided to uh, basically shoot freezing ice pellets down at me. Frankie's like, why am I getting pelted in the head with ice pellets? Yeah, it's uh, like, uh, it's gonna be like, it's gonna be like a gully washer, but instead of, you know, raining, it's just gonna be a bunch of ice pellets. I don't know if you guys can hear that at all, but uh, it's a perfect day for in inside stuff. You can kind of see them bouncing off the roof. So it's also a good day to check to see if the roof leaks because, uh, well, that was also a concern because, uh, well, the way I did it, I don't, uh, I'm not the expert when it comes to the cedar shake. Anyways, all right, I've been rambling. So uh, anyways, just to give you a little bit of a recap, the last episode we took a bunch of old spools and uh, we made our staircase and uh, our landing to uh, get inside. And we also did our spindle railing where we cut some we cut some uh, cedar posts and we decided to make the handrail out of some some of those posts. All right, we're in. We're in. Looks like somebody had a party in here and didn't clean up afterwards. What a mess. Yeah, you can kind of see the remnants of making the door. Everything was kind of shut around and uh, yeah. Why am I talking so much? Maybe I'm procrastinating because I don't actually want to sand all of that goodness, that marshmallow catastrophe that's up there. So we made the handrail out of the uh, tenon posts out of the cedar, and then we used a two inch piece of uh, PVC ABS, and we did the handrail out of that. And that brings us to the, uh, the stage now where we're uh, going to finish the inside. Oh yeah, we also did the door, which was uh, you know a fun project in on itself. And we added the window there. So now we're kind of closed in on the outside. Our outside activities are done. We can focus on the inside. Now the inside is going to be extra special. All right, let's have a little closer look at what I'm dealing with. This is a uh, two pound spray foam. And uh, traditionally what would happen is you would put this in your joist cavity and you would call it a day. You wouldn't have to deal with it after that. And, um, but on this ceiling, I want to do something a little different and I want to smooth this thing out. And, um, Maybe I didn't think that through enough. <laughs> All right, check, check, one, two. We're gonna try, we're gonna fire up the GoPro. Can I see it? I hate GoPros. <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah. So the, the, there's a couple ways to do it. It would be like to like really triangle, tri tiny triangle pieces, really, really thin pieces, and just kind of all the way around. And then you end up skimming it anyway. So my thoughts on this guy is to take this and shave it down and kind of, um, Sort of like car body style. So tools today, I've got my earmuffs because, uh, well, standing foam is not the most entertaining things to listen to. So that's the that I got my uh, my head thing for my GoPro. I've got my uh, P100 mask with uh, charcoal filters on it, as well as the P100. That's the way I can uh, I can fart all I want and I won't be able to smell myself. The finished surface at one point, doesn't it? Doesn't it look finished? Doesn't look finished at all. It actually looks like it something. I don't know. <laughs> oh man. That's gonna be something. Something. Uh, and I also have a, uh, a basically a, uh, a bag full of batteries. And what that's gonna power is my angle grinder here. Now, what happens is I accidentally ordered seven inch grinding discs and these are from uh, Diablo. Diablo fiber discs, and there, it's a 24 grit. And I thought I was ordering four inch ones, but I actually accidentally ordered seven inch ones. And then I was thinking, well, those are too big. They don't fit my grinder. But then I thought, what would be actually kind of cool is if I took it with my grinder uh, and then put my, my four inch backing pad, and that gives me like a two inch sort of feathering. Is it gonna start? Turn it on, GoPro. There it goes, there it goes. I think we're recording. Are we recording? I think we're going. All right, we're recording. I've got one battery loaded in my angle grinder, which is a five amp hour battery. We're gonna see how far this goes. Hopefully you guys don't get too covered in snow. You guys can actually watch this. This will be kind of, it'll be kind of neat. I'm gonna mask up, get my ear mufflers on. I'll be completely encased and protected. All right, Rudy. Hey, you can't get it out. There we go. Safety first, eventually. All right, let's... Uh... But the good thing about this grinder too is it's variable speed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go real slow and then I can just take off a little bit of material and kind of shape it that way. This should work well. All right, get some headphones, 
See how this might be easier by not filming it? What do you think? Is it getting better? I don't know. I gotta be able to see anything. I don't know if I've eaten it or not. I'm gonna shut it down, see if I can do it. Should be a little easier to clean up. Everything kind of tucked away, there's no real stuff exposed this time. Only another four hours or so. Probably every battery I own. I got more than four, but. Well, this is what it looks like the next day. I spent uh, a considerable amount of time cleaning up myself because everything is coated in uh, little bits of styrofoam. As you can see, it's coming along, it's getting flattened out. I have uh, tried, I've donned the late, the, <laughs> the Tyvek suit. And uh, well, hopefully I'll be able to contain a little bit of the foam. I had foam nearly everywhere, in every crevice, every little hole, every little thing. Glad I didn't clean up before I did this. So anyways, I got I, I, I sanded for about four hours yesterday. Uh, I got pretty, pretty close this side over here. I got pretty close and uh, yeah, I just gotta do this side here. So hopefully we can get that buttoned up and get some mud on it. Cause uh, yeah, this part of it's uh, not very fun. Well, after 10 hours of sanding, it looks like this. It's pretty smooth. As you guys can see, it's, uh, it just needs to be more smooth. So the plan now is to coat this with a coat of drywall mud and uh, mesh. All right, so we're at the point now where we've got to kind of coat all our, our wood. So we got wood, we got styrofoam, we got wood, we got styrofoam. We want to consolidate that all. So we're essentially going to be building um, drywall from scratch, um, but we're going to make it a little bit stronger. I'm going to use this stuff here, which is a, um, a really wide fiberglass meshing. Now, you guys are maybe familiar with the mesh they use on fiberglass. Or not fiber, the mesh they blah, 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 blah. The, the mesh they use for drywall taping. It's a little bit thinner than this stuff. Like it's not as, not as wide. I believe they use this stuff for stucco. And uh, so that's how wide it is. Generally speaking, the stuff they use for drywall just kind of covers the, the joints. Now, if you're using the mesh for drywall, I, I highly recommend using sheetrock 45, some, some kind of chemical setting compound if you're gonna go over mesh, because it's not the greatest at preventing cracking in drywall but this up here is we're consolidating it because what we have is basically like a monolithic slab where we have uh, a lot of foam and a lot of wood together so there's differentials it might expand and contract at a different rate so this is what we're going to do to consolidate it and uh, then we're going to use a coat of sheetrock 45 over the entire thing which is going to kind of create a, uh, like a monolithic slab of sheetrock slash fiberglass mesh goodness and hopefully that works and uh, if it doesn't it'll look really neat and crackly hopefully it doesn't come to that but uh anyways we can definitely uh you know visit this at a later date to see how well she fared 
Frankie has come. Frank, what do you think? You gonna help me with this? You can hear me talking to myself, right? And they're like, I'm gonna go investigate. So Frankie is, uh, yeah, she's, she's not that interested. Go, go Frankie. So yeah, we're gonna get that started and um, hopefully get a coat on this stuff uh, soon because it is getting colder. The good thing about uh, the chemical drying stuff is that it, uh, it is chemical drying and it doesn't require a lot of heat to dry. Um, so that's my plan. Oh, who knew I would, uh, you know, be looking forward to this stage after sanding that foam for so long. I think anything is different. Anything is better than doing that. I got the black variety too. It, uh, can you see that the price on that? 50 cents. I don't know if it's sticky or not. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not sticky. So I'll have to put some glue on it. It's probably why it's 50 cents. What does it say on it? Inspected by charcoal. No, uh, yeah, I don't even know. This stuff is probably more so the, for the uh, stucco variety. Like I said, it's not got the sticky back on it, but it was 50 cents. I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up because if you guys ever bought the uh, meshy, uh, Drywall, mud, or tapey stuff, you know it's uh, it's crazy expensive for 50 cents all day long. All day long I'll store that for years until I have a use for it. Hey guys, this video is sponsored by Timu, I'm gonna give you a little uh, show and tell on exactly what I ended up picking up. Now, their brand boasts you can shop like a billionaire and that's not far off. I was able to get a lot of this stuff like up to like 90% off retail, which is kind of crazy. So I was like, I'm gonna test this thing out so you guys, you know, can see what exactly you can get from Timu. So let's, let's get, let's get started on what exactly I picked out. So first things first, I was like, you know, I'm kind of skeptical of these, these glasses and uh, I picked them up. This, the link to these glasses will actually be in the, uh, the down below. It's the DKH2622. You can see everything I bought. So I got some of these safety glasses. They're polarized. And I was like, these fit the profile. These are awesome. And they were really cheap. So I got, you know, I was like, you know what? If I'm gonna get one, I'm gonna get two. That's just the way I roll. It's like an ASMR video already. Crunchy, crunch. Anyways, there's a whole bunch of those guys. I'm not sure exactly how many is in the, 50 pieces. 50 pieces of the air fryer liners. Got that. Sponges, because I like these sponges. They've got the really scratchy pads. I'm just gonna open them up. Sponges, can't get enough of these sponges. It's got the abrasive side and the other side. So you wanna, you want, I like to use them to dr sand drywall mud. It allows it to, uh, to kind of, scratch it off and uh, and you get the cleaning side. Those are kind of like stuff like, you know, consumable products. You know, you don't really want uh, to spend a lot of money on them. Timu is the way to go. I got my daughter some of these guys. We're gonna do stocking stuffers on these. These are hair ties. Um, they, not, they don't get that metal chunk that's in them. I've got like sausage fingers, so it's really hard for me to tie uh, hair ties up, but these seems to be pretty decent, decent quality. I don't have any hair, so uh, I can't really test them. And then I was like, back to the sponges. And I got these guys, these little, these little kind of like, uh, why does that, oh, okay. I was like, you can see through that thing. That looks silver to me, but it looks on camera yellow. So yellow side, and it's got this abrasive side on the yellow side, and they got the little hangy thing so you can dry it so it doesn't uh, smell all funky. Disposable plastic straws. Actually, these are reusable plastic straws. Individually wrapped because, uh, well, if you guys haven't heard in Canada, you cannot get plastic straws anymore. Hopefully that changes soon. Reuse their multi-use straws and I can make sure they don't go in any sea turtles' noses. That's, uh, that's important. So I got a whole bunch of those guys. What's this one? Oh, I don't even remember. Oh, those are my, uh, my, crafting, my crafting razor blades. I should probably be really careful. Those are replacement wheels for the Ulfa or Rolly rotary cutter knives. So if you've ever bought these guys, they're really expensive, but on Timu, they are really inexpensive. I think that's a five pack, five pack of rotary cutter blades. You always want to know the temperature and the humidity. And then I was like, let's have some fun. I got myself a remote control car. Cause I was like, you know what? This is too good to be true. There's no way that I can get a remote control car for that cheap. And like, it's legit. It's like a legit race car. So like it's got like front suspension on that that bad boy. Look at the front suspension. It's like a solid car. You can go and spend you know a gajillion dollars on this stuff locally at a you know a bricks and mortar store. But why would you? 
Why would you spend that much money on something that, you know, at the end of the day, maybe your kid's gonna ram it into a wall or something like that. There was some stuff that I was like, mm, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's so inexpensive that I picked it up. This is the, uh, the LED moon lamp. Here's the picture, how you set it up. Should have paid attention to the, there, like that. I knew it wasn't that hard. So like, and then that. Look at that, that's pretty cool. Like it looks like the moon. It's got the divots and everything. That is real, can you see the detail in that? And then I was like, I'm skeptical. I was very skeptical when I picked this, these items up. I was like, there is no way that I will be able to buy a pair of shoes for the price that was at. It was like, I don't know. I can't even remember the price. It's a legitimate pair of shoes. I was like, I got them and I tried them on. I'm like, these are the most comfortable shoes for the price, right? Jingjiang, the capital sports brand in China. Well, that's crazy. For 20 years, the company has been focusing on the sales of products, and development of sports shoes and clothing products. Well, if anybody's been making shoes for 20 years and maybe they couldn't get them to our, you know, North American market, you know what? Shoes are gone crazy price, like 200 bucks for a pair of shoes. You know what? These guys here, I will try them all day long for $20 or $29 or whatever they were. They're legitimate shoes. So we're gonna put those on the, on the short list over here. I did end up getting some tools because I was like, I can't pass up tools. Cobalt step bits, which allows you to drill holes. And if you've ever purchased those, they're very expensive. Velcro wire straps, reusable. I got uh, some emery cloth for sanding some flap discs for welding. I got this thing, cause you know what? I was I was thinking the other day, I went and visited my buddy at the scrapyard and uh, he has a bunch of junk cars and uh, they don't take the change out of them. I'm like, why don't you guys take the change out of them? He's like, well, that's too much trouble or something like that. So what I did was I bought this uh, off Timu is a, is a little uh, magnet uh, retractable thing. So you can like, what I was gonna do is bring this to the scrapyard and just pick up all the change. Cause you know what? It's so easy to just kind of dangle this thing underneath the seat, get all the change and who knows what else from underneath the seat. And I was just gonna like pop it and pull it in my pocket. He actually said, yeah, go for it if you want. So this is my, this is my tool of choice to pick up spare change. And then you can take that change, you can buy stuff on Timu. What else do I got? Flashlight. This thing, go, oh, this is crazy. Again, I was skeptical and I was like, all right, I'm not sure. So this thing here is a solar powered street light. Now you're thinking it's not that bright. There's no way it's gonna be bright. Well, this thing is like, it's like looking into the sun and it's got a remote control and you can change it for, uh, it's got the uh, motions, ah, geez. The occupancy sensor, so the sensor, so it's motion sensor. So when you're walking up to it, it turns on. Oh, for the love of Pete, ah, we gotta put that thing away. St why is it, why when I look at it, it turns on? Anyway, so that's the, uh, the sensor street lamp. I'm gonna turn that thing off. And this is a, uh, to plant, you know, flowers and stuff, which is kind of cool. You can auger into the ground. It's like a game changer for tree planting. You just got your drill in your hol holster. You pop a hole in the ground and you can properly plant your flowers. Little little keychain drill bits, which is kind of cool. Got those guys. And then uh, I've always been interested in cutting glass, but I've never really had the means to go out and just buy like a purpose-built glass cutter. So this is a diamond abrasive disc that allows you to cut glass. I've always said, if you're gonna, if you're gonna start something, you don't necessarily wanna buy the name brand stuff. You wanna, you know, kinda get, there's always a barrier of entry and anything like that. So uh, Timu is a great place to kind of go find, you know, your first, and then try it out and uh, you know, you might be surprised. So anyways, check out the Timu app. You can download it to your smartphone and then you can download, uh, you, can, you can order you know, everything off of Timu. It's, uh, it's a great little app to get uh, you know, your necessities. The DKH2622 is the code and you can actually look at all of this list of stuff and uh, if you wanna pick it up and you'll get the $100 um, you know, $100 towards your purchase. But anyways, check them out, Timu, awesome. Take a look at that. How do you steer it? Oh, yeah, whoa. 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 It's worth its weight in gold. Yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna charge this bad boy up. This is awesome. Oh. Remember guys to download the Timu app today and you can also use the code DKH2622 and that'll give you a link to all the things that I bought today. You'll also get a $100 coupon bundle towards your purchase. All right, this is the other fun part. Everything about this is fun. We're going to mix some Sheetrock 90. The reason I'm using Sheetrock 90 is because uh, 
Well, I don't want to have to run around like a chicken with the head cut off and um, mud. This gives me about 90 minutes of working time. Actually, it's not even 90 minutes, it's like 45 minutes of working time. And then uh, it dries to a consistency where you can't do anything with it. So we're just gonna mix it up here. I add some water to the bucket. Water to the bucket and then add some more water. And then I take some oof, drill and mix her up. I want a kind of like a smooth peanut butter consistency. All right, pro tip, pro tip, pro tip. Whenever you're mixing Sheetrock 45, what you wanna do is you wanna mix it to the consistency you like, and then you let it rest. I'm not sure what it does when it rests. It gets its stuff in order, and then what you do is give it a final spin, and that's the consistency it will be during the whole working time until it starts to set up. I don't know what the resting does. Hmm. Maybe you guys know. Do you guys know what the resting does? Another pro tip, if you're mixing up drywall mud, is to add some dish soap, like Dawn dish soap inside, and uh, it allows it to smooth out really nice. I'm not sure what that does either. It's like the uh, surfactants or something like that. It allows the, like, the stuff to go on smooth, kind of gets rid of the bubbles. Do you think it would add more bubbles? It doesn't, it uh, makes it nice and smooth. Dish soap, dish soap's where it's at if you want a nice creamy finish. All right, let this sit and then sit you guys up so you guys can uh, watch the progress. Hopefully it don't get you muddy. Let's get a skim on this thing. Well, I've got one, well, one strip done all the way around and I've used uh, significantly more sheetrock than uh, I thought I was going to use. As you can see, I had to go pick up some more and it uh, turns out uh, shrink shrinkflation. Shrinkflation is alive and real even in sheetrock world. Usually you could buy an 11 kilogram bag for about 25 bucks. Now you can buy an eight kilogram bag for 25 bucks. Huh. Imagine that. Because they're not making any more sheetrock. All right, well, this is where we're at. So this is a unique situation when it comes to taping because it is round. Um, so you can only go pretty much this direction because my trowel doesn't bend the way it goes up. So uh, yeah, anyway, I, if you look down my trowel, it's got a natural little bend in it and I'm using it to kind of feather out the edges. Now, I can't kind of stop very much when I'm doing this because this is chemical setting. So we've got a limited amount of time to apply this stuff because it's going to set like a rock. So I'm going to work as fast as I can to get it on. So I basically scoop a blob, apply it, a blob, apply it, and so forth applying more blobs as I go and I think a lot of guys that are taping and money for the first time they try to you know put it on and then they try to smooth it out immediately and they don't actually have enough material so then they get frustrated and they uh they quit all right so now I've got pretty much a whole pan worth of mud on this little area here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go from the mud that I already set and I'm going to work my way up and then just kind of clean it off and you don't want to clean it off this isn't the finished coat so we're not looking for perfection we're looking for okay any kind of lines that are left are still okay because you can easily knock off the line or even scratch it off with the trowel so I'm just working my way around because it is round around and around we go and then I will make sure I got the right side of my trowel. And I got it. So I'm putting a little bit more pressure on the one side. So this, this side that's on the bottom, I'll put a little more pressure because I can. And then that allows it to feather it out. All right. So at that point of the game, we're pretty much 
Just leave it. Don't touch it. Let it dry. And then we can throw another coat on it afterwards. So I'm gonna get another, load myself up another box. I'm gonna do this other section while that's dry. Well guys, it's story time. The plan was to skim out the rest of the ceiling and uh, kind of let it dry. So the, what happened was I left to go back to the house, uh, tuck my daughter in for the evening and my plan was to, because everything was going so well, I was gonna go skim another layer on the ceiling of sheetrock in order to get it right, right ready for actual mud. And then, so laid down with my daughter and uh, had a little nap. <laughs> and then I wake up from my nap. I feel a little dizzy, which is, uh, I don't know, that's not normal. And uh, I get up and my whole left side of my body is numb. So my face over is numb, my arm is numb, my, uh, my belly is numb, my leg is numb. <laughs> it, was, it was generally straight. And I figure, you know what, it just, I slept funny. It, I just fell, it fell asleep, kind of like, like a numb leg and you kind of hit it and it's kind of got that tingly feeling. Well, it wasn't, uh, it didn't go away. So <laughs> I'm laughing about it now but it wasn't funny at the time. So I go down and I talk to my wife and I say, hey, Rachel, um, don't feel great. Can you take my blood pressure? And she did. And she's like, well, it, it, it's, it's high. I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean? She goes, I don't know. She goes, what are you feeling? I'm like, well, I don't feel great. Half my body's numb. And she's like, oh, uh, well, you should probably go to the hospital. Anyway, so I, I, <laughs> I go to the hospital um, sitting in, in, in the little waiting to talk to anybody sort of little area and um, after about 10 minutes sitting there um, finally get called up to go talk to the I guess the triage nurse and uh, well you get fast-tracked in when you have those sort of symptoms and uh, they were saying that uh, you know that's kind of the signs of a stroke and I'm like oh well that's great I can you know I can't finish my ceiling because I'm gonna have a stroke so anyways Fast forward to 4 a.m. I actually, uh, you know, I had an EKG done. I had a uh, blood test done. I had a CAT scan done, chest X-ray. They did all that sort of thing, and then and then I waited. I waited like they like that was all done in about a half an hour, and then uh, I waited till 4 a.m. to actually speak to a doctor, and he was like, "Well, uh, your tests are all normal." I'm like, "Well, you could have told me that like, you know, four or five hours ago. That would have been nice. I could have went home." He goes, well, you know, how are you feeling now? And I said, well, you know, they, they kind of, it, my whole body went numb and then it kind of got not numb and then it came back and got numb again. And I was thinking back going, well, maybe, maybe I pinched a nerve not in that ceiling, kind of like the twisting motion with your lower back and upper back and arms and having your arms above your head for three days straight, which uh, could have been the case. So I kind of explained that to him. He's like, well, you know, the only, you know, like, we haven't really got any results. Um, but if you're feeling okay, uh, chances are it was, it was a pinched nerve. Um, he says the only way we can conclusively get to the bottom of this it would be an MRI. But he says if there's no symptoms occurring currently, there's really nothing to look for. And I'm like, oh, that's, well, that's great. Um, so he's like, well, feel good, you know, monitor your symptoms and uh, check back with us a little later. So long story short, uh, I've been pretty much laying low for the last, uh, it's exactly seven days. It's been seven days since I've been kind of laying low and trying to do minimal activities. Um, every shovel handle, every ax handle in my shop that was broken is now replaced. And uh, I, you know, all those little jobs that you kind of think, oh, I'll save for a rainy day. I kind of have a rainy week. And, and just, you know, laid low and did, you know, very minimal physical activities. Uh, and, and, and yeah, except for my brother's sewage pipe blew up and I had to help him. And the good news is, is once that was done, I didn't really experience any of the numbness on the side of my body. So I just think it's racked up to a pinched nerve or repetitive stress injury doing the mudding after so long for so long. So anyway, here's the, uh, here's the, here's the hospital bracelet to prove it. I'm going to keep it as a little memento and I'm going to, uh, hang it over here on the wall. And that can be a little time capsule for whoever tears this thing apart in however many years and goes, hey, look at that. There's uh, there's somebody's uh, hospital bracelet. All right. Anyways, we're going to get back to uh, finishing this bad boy up. And uh, yeah, hopefully there's no more of that because that, uh, that sucked. 
Okay, there's somewhat of a judgment call here. This is the center of the um, cone, and uh, it's a little oblong. I don't know if you guys can tell. It's got, uh, it's misshapen, and that might be my fault. Uh, when I was shaving the stuff down, I didn't take as much off on the one side as the other, but I think it does, it does look a little strange. Right? Like if you get far enough away, like if we get all the way down to here, like it doesn't look like super, super terrible. See it? What I'm thinking of doing is actually rounding that off so it's like a perfectly round thing. So my plan is I've taken a piece, the lid off of a screw container and I've cut it to the shape. And the plan is to kind of butter that angle all the way around there in order to uh, make myself like sort of like not a hard angle of the uh, of where that meets where the ceiling I guess where the very upper portion of the ceiling meets the slanty side that's my plan hopefully it's gonna work who knows we'll get the whirl it's the worst that's gonna happen as long as I should work. Got my plastic trowel. Maybe shave that little corner off. I don't know. Let's try it. Well, I've been rattling around in my brain a little bit on how to finish the underside of the ceiling. One of my initial plans was to actually clad it with wood, and then I was like, well, maybe it just doesn't tie it in right. It might be really difficult to actually make that work out okay so instead what i did is i actually had some trim text corner bead laying around um so what i did is actually added some uh, quarter inch plywood i took it and i cut it into three inch strips and then i bent it around the perimeter of that underside ledge uh screwed it in with some drywall screws and then what i did was i actually doubled that up because you anytime you're making a curve it's always a good idea to add two layers of anything because it kind of averages out the curves it makes it so you don't have any flat spots because the one thing that sticks out like a sore thumb on a curve is flat spots. So you kind of want to avoid that anytime you're doing a curve. So once the trim or the plywood was on, I added the trim text on top. And what, how you install that stuff is essentially spray glue. You take the spray glue, you spray it on, and then you give it a little bit of time in order to set up. You spray both sides and then you stick it in place. Uh, for an added security on this particular ceiling, what I did was, um, I added more spray glue and then I used a fiber mesh tape on top of that and, and glued it in place. Now, when you're installing trim text, generally you would put the spray glue and then you put staples, but um, that's usually when you're installing it on drywall. In this case, I'm just installing it on just plain wood. And uh, once that was done, I actually took some more spray glue, I sprayed the wood and then I mesh taped all of the seams that were in the, the drop down circle and then I took some sheetrock 45 I mixed it up a little bit like peanut butter and coated the entire surface of everything so all the wood is coated and uh, the corner bead is coated as well and that's giving, giving me a nice seamless transition from wall to ceiling once the walls are done and there might be a couple of people out there that say hey you can't mud wood because it's two different surfaces and it's gonna crack and yada yada blah 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 you know what if that falls off. If that corner bead falls off, I will eat my hat. I will eat my hat. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. It is a one solid mass of sheetrock 45 and spray glue and plastic, so I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Eh, we'll find out. Maybe get some barbecue sauce just in case. And uh, yeah, let's move on. So that's the view from about a foot off the floor. As you can see, it's really kind of cool. And uh, the camera doesn't really do it justice, but it is very, very, very neat. I like it a lot. I think there would be a market in the residential construction industry to actually have these things um, kind of like custom made, maybe like a CNC company, like, you know, Master Machine Manufacturing. I'm looking at you guys. Just take a giant foam block and uh, punch in a couple of numbers and have it kind of machine this whole shape out out of a giant block of styrofoam. I don't think that would be that hard. Not that I've ever done any cnc -ing, but like if somebody gave you the dimensions of a room and they wanted a ceiling detail like this, just punch it in and it just makes it out of a giant block of styrofoam. Even like domes, this happens to be a cone, but like any kind of tray ceiling, because it's not a structural element. 
well, this is a structural element, but normally speaking, a detail like this in a, in a residential location, like in a hallway or grand entrance, wouldn't be structural. It would just be more aesthetic. So if you can make it out of styrofoam blocks, like made to measure sort of thing, ship it. It'd be light. It'd be easy. That's like a million dollar idea. Maybe somebody will do it. Hmm. Hmm. I'd sign up. I'd be like, here, give me one of these things and then print it off and uh, yeah, <laughs> done. See nothing. All right, update time. I skipped the part where I sanded everything and you can see it's very smooth. It's very smooth. It almost looks like a uh, nice, you know, winter day. Happens to be very cold today. But yeah, you can see the down thing. So the plan now is to spray. Pretty much clean up everything because uh, I don't want uh, mu dust in my paint. And uh, yeah, so I'm probably gonna cover the floor. I got my spray gun all ready because I don't really know how to roll something that's conical in shape. So I'm gonna spray it. It's probably gonna take longer to clean than it is to spray because, uh, well, it's not very big, but you've gotta set the sprayer machine up and uh, get her done. So that's the plan. And then I'll bring you guys back in once it's all sprayed to give you guys a kind of a sneak peek exactly what it looks like because it's uh well i don't really want you guys in here while i'm painting because i'm gonna get you covered in paint and as you guys know paint doesn't come off very well that's why i've got uh my wife's finest clothes on because uh, she's like deemed these unsuitable it turns out i don't have any painted clothes left which is unusual although the under the, the lower levels got paint on them the under because i usually paint in the in the winter or in the summertime so i've got uh my painting clothes on all right, I don't really want to do this. Covered in paint. All right, let's uh, get this thing fired up, get her done. It's not gonna take very long. And then get you guys back in here. That wasn't so bad. Hang on. All right, well, that wasn't so bad. It uh, took like, a, like literally, I don't know, like 20 seconds, a minute and a half to spray that thing but I didn't think there's any other way to make that really look cool. So we're just gonna let that dry, put a second coat on it, and then the uh, ceiling will be all done. Exciting. All right, the ceiling's all done. I'm just waiting for my daughter to actually uh, come over because I want to show her for the first time what this thing looks like because I think she'll be really excited. The wonder of a child, we can live it through her eyes, which would be kind of interesting. I just want to uh, show her first. So I'm gonna set up the camera and get her to come in here. I'm gonna turn the ceiling on for the first time and uh, see what her reaction is going to be. This is gonna be pretty exciting. All right, Lena, come on in. Okay. Is it dark? Yeah, I can't see. Okay, we gotta close the door. We gotta make it really dark, okay? Hi. All right, Lena, do you have any, like, can you see us? You can see us. There, can you see, can you see? Yeah. Okay, what do you, what do you think? What do you think this is gonna look like, the ceiling? A whole pink ceiling. You want a pink ceiling? How about blue? No. How about blue first? <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Can I have um, blue with pink stars? Let's try blue first. Okay. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? It's amazing. Wait, wait, wait. What do you? What about red? Blue moon. Actually, that looks like uh, something. That looks something really cool, actually. That is neat. But the red moon's cool. The red moon, let's do red moon. The red moon rising. Well, it's almost too, it's almost too bright. Dim it. But you can still see the moon in the stuff. It's pretty cool. I don't think that's as red as it can go. Hang on, let's we'll see. Blue? <gasps> wow. What about green? Yeah. You don't like green? It looks like it's a haunted house and you turn Doesn't it? Green. Let's do red. Oh. <laughs> I can hardly see it. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I can hardly see it. All right, so let, let's, you want to do something else? Can what I do see you, pink? You think pink? I don't know if there's pink. Let's try pink. There's pink. Is that pink? Nope. That's mine. Here, you want to touch it? That's a remote that you can change the, you can change the color on the, on the ceiling. That's purple. That. How did I make a moon? Look at it, there's a moon on the ceiling. It's amazing. It's that thing, isn't it? 
it's that thing. It's, uh, that's projecting onto the ceiling. Can you see? It's amazing! There's the moon. The moon is here. What do you think? Cool. That's cool, eh? Hey, what if I put a color on with the moon? I don't think the moon will stay with the color. You can try. I can't. Oh, is there a red? There is a red moon. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that's ominous. Ominous. I think the brighter colors of the moon won't show up, but you can try. What color are you going to go? You got, oh, blue. Oh, yeah, look at the blue moon. Blue moon. Uh, okay, I can make a blink. Yeah, that's fun. That's, that's fun. It's fun blinking. I like when it blinks. I'm sure that people like it too. It's too, bri it's too blinky. All right. Cool. All right, buddy. Well, what do you think so far? Good. Yeah, Can I hang out in here for a little bit? Sure. Okay, do you have a chair right there? So I can sit. You want a chair already? Yeah. Well, we, we got it on the walls yet. I just brought you in to show you what it looks like. What do you think, Lena? It's amazing. Isn't that cool? I like the red. I like the moon. Yeah, isn't that cool? Well, you can do other things too. You can actually have more um, settings, constellations, and stuff up there. Can I do it? No, not right now. Uh -huh. I'll get you. I'll get you set up. Well guys, Lena and I are gonna sit around and we're going to watch the constellations roll by. There's a lot of little cartridges in that uh, in that thing to actually explore. I think the uh, moon, what do you think of the moon? Pretty cool, eh? Uh, yeah. It's pretty neat, eh? I think I like it too. I think there's like a, there's like a black hole. You wanna see a black hole? Yeah. We can see that thing too, which is, uh, we're just gonna explore that for a little bit. And uh, anyways, hopefully, hopefully next week uh, we can either get this thing all wrapped up. What are, you, are you excited about that, Lena? Yeah, I can't wait to get, actually get the walls. Get the walls, yeah. Spray foam's getting old really fast. But yeah, there was a little bit of a hiccups this year, or this, this year, this, this week, but, uh, or the entire year, who knows. Anyways, yeah, we can get this uh, show on the road. We'll get it wrapped up next week. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, join me in the next one. Right, Lena? Yep. All right.